Number 61, a telescope can be used to enlarge the diameter of a laser beam to, and limit diffraction spreading. The laser beam is sent through. Cool. Letter A, this is done on the Mount Wilson telescope producing a 2.54 meter diameter beam of 633 nanometer light. Uh, what is the minimum angular spread of the beam? All right, so letter A, right, we've seen this now a couple of times, that the minimum angular spread of the beam is going to be equal to 1.22 multiplied by then the wavelength divided by then the diameter of the beam. And this is the wavelength of the beam. So just plug in the value. So this is 633 nanometers, but why don't we convert that into meters? So just multiply that by 10 to the minus 9th, and then divide that by the diameter, which, oh, goody gumdrops, they gave it to us already in meters. So we can just now plug and chug. So this is 1.22 times 633 times 10 to the minus 9th divided by 2.54. And what do we get? We get a value here of about 3.04 times 10 to the minus 7th radians, right? radians okay just like that dave matthews band song right if you know what song i'm talking about leave a link below right eyes and radians wow okay thoroughly embarrassing i wish i had any vocal range right i mean his vocal range is amazing but i have none i can't even hold a i can't i can't even i can't even hold a note um right that's why i play the drums so here we have that particular angle, and that's the minimum angular spread. All right, be careful, it's in radians. Letter B, it says, neglecting atmospheric effects, what is the size of the spot this beam would make on the moon, assuming it has this particular distance? All right, so let's move this on over, and let's take a look at now letter B. Now, there is something different about this problem than the other ones, and that's because the diameter is not that small, okay, for the beam. So we have to take that diameter into account in this particular problem. So here's, let's say there's the beam, that's the start of the beam, and this is the lunar surface over there. And we know that this spreads in a certain angle. And you know what? By gosh, by golly, that's what we found just before. This angle, okay? We found that. So, okay, we found that angle out. That looks like one theta, right? Just theta. So we also know the distance it tells us from this beam to the moon. All right, it says it's going to be 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters, which means we also know this length. Oh, look at the triangle that's forming and this length, right? Now, if you know the angle in here and you know the adjacent side to that angle, what can you find? Well, you can find that particular opposite side, right? Now, we've done this now in the past couple of problems. So that opposite side should be equal to then tangent of the angle multiplied then by the distance right, or the adjacent side. So this is y then is equal to tangent of that angle now, 3.84 times 10 to the 8 meters, multiplied then by, uh, wait, what? No, <laughs> wait, just kidding, 3.04 times 10 to the minus 7, multiplied then by um, the x, right, the distance, that's 3.84 times 10 to the minus, uh, times 10 to the 8th, wow. That's what happens when you get four hours of sleep, All right? I'm trust. I'm going through the final parts of the year with you guys as well. Trust me. Um, right, staying up to all hours, helping, um, which I'm so grateful to do. It's it's a great, but I, I I feel your pain. I feel your pain. So tangent of that angle. Make sure, please, your calculator is in degree mode. Uh, what? Radian mode. Radian mode. Wow. Maybe I'm just not going to speak for the rest of this. I'm just going to calculate and then just put the numbers up. 3.04 times 10 to the minus 7th. So we've taken the tangent of that value and then multiplied. Oh, wait a minute. It's the same thing, right? Huh. So basically multiply that by 3.84 times 10 to the 8th. All right. So this works out to now be 11 point. Well, what? Oh, boy. I think I'm stopping after this. 116.736. Now, that's the y value for this piece, right? And you might say, okay, great. So is that also the Y for this part? Yeah, yes, it is, right? This is obviously now not to scale. But then you might say, well, what in the world is this? Oh, wait a minute. Is that just the diameter? Yes, it is. It's just the diameter. Which that diameter then of the beam was 2.54 meters. These are all in meters. So how do you find the total? Well, you just add it up, right? So take the 116, multiply it by 2, and then add the 2.54. 
and we get 236. All right, so the total distance there, the total y value, y sub t, I guess, if you want to call it, would be equal to 236 meters. If you don't take that diameter into account, you're going to be off by 2.54 meters. Uh, we didn't do that in the other problems. Why? Well, the reason being is because the diameter was really tiny. So in the other ones, it was like 0.1 millimeter, right? Adding 0.1 millimeter to, you know, this works out to be about, what is that, 232-ish, 233, right? Some Somewhere around there. Um, you know, it, it would be insignificant, all right? But, uh, you know, here it does have a little significance. So anyway, you can do every problem, by the way, like this. And then, whoops, what happened there? You can do every problem like this, all right? And uh, if that diameter is negligible, you can add in the diameter. If it's negligible, okay, great. You added something negligible, no big deal. But sometimes it might be faster to do it the other way. It depends. All right, guys, thanks very much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I'll see you in the next one. All right, thank you so much. And uh, yeah, did I say I'll see you in the next video? I'm taking a break. Bye.